We're going to give you our final keys to the game and our prediction for this week coming up here on Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Jay, before we get to our final keys of the game and our prediction for this week, which SEC game is the most intriguing to you in week 11? Oh, man, you caught me off guard with that one. But if we're looking at SEC games, whew, there's a lot of fun ones this week. That Georgia Missouri, that Georgia Ole Miss one, as well as the Bama LSU. I've been throwing, tossing it up in the air which one is more critical to me because the good thing is with that Bama LSU game, we see both of those to wrap the season up. Mm -hmm. And this one, Bama has this game. They'll have their cupcake game and then they'll play against Oklahoma after we're coming off a bye. And then they've got the iron bowl right after which, which is of course always a pain in the butt for them. Right. But then LSU they're they're going to be intriguing because that will be the last one of the season. They've got Vanderbilt. They've got, we're the fourth game on their five game run. They've got, of course, Alabama, Florida, Vanderbilt, and then us. So, we could be a, a, a physical woman, but I think for me, it is definitely that Georgia game. Georgia's only a two and a half point favorite, and I'm kind of surprised by that. I know Lane Kiffin's been dreaming of this game, John. This is the game that he needs. Mm -hmm. This is the one that he can prove himself to everybody that he is the elite coach there at Ole Miss, especially now that Billy Napier has gotten a vote of confidence from Florida. He right. can't take that job. Nope. He's going to be stuck at the sip. So he needs that win. That's the game I'm going to be watching at the same – well, I'll be watching in the afternoon because Alabama LSU goes on the same time as us, but I'm going to be watching that Georgia Ole Miss game. Which one is jumping out to you the most? Yeah, I mean, so many fun games this weekend in the SEC. Florida at Texas is going to be fun, especially if DJ Lagway can play. Can I, can I give you an underrated one? South Carolina at Vanderbilt? Yes, it is. Yes, Dude, it is. I, I guarantee when, that, when the schedule came out, nobody was excited about South – Carolina and Vanderbilt. Nobody was excited about it, but my goodness, what a fun matchup that is now as we sit here in November, like that Shoot game it. with Diego Pavia with South Carolina's defensive line with the, the coaching staffs and what they've done this year, dude, that one has a lot of fun um, involved. And listen, I know nobody wants to see a three loss team in, in the college football playoff, but if both either of these teams runs the table, They'll have an intriguing case to be made to be a three loss team in the college football playoff, especially a team like Vanderbilt, who's got the win over Alabama. So, and, and South Carolina has got the win over Texas A&M. I mean, listen, nobody wants to see a three loss team, but one of those two teams, if they ran the table, I think has a very, very strong case. So that's going to be a really fun one to watch again, not one that's going to move the needle for everybody. Cause everybody's going to be watching, you know, Georgia, Ole Miss and LSU, Alabama, and then Texas, Florida, obviously. And we're going to be watching Oklahoma, Missouri, but that South Carolina Vanderbilt game has a lot of fun. Uh, I think written all over it. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. It's so going to be fun. so much fun to watch. I, and, Cause I think that what thing is going to be so much fun about it is neither team is really that great at passing the ball. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Sellers is a really good runner. I mean, he has good passing moments, but for the most part, he's a really good runner. Very Same thing with runner. Diego Pavia. He just yeah. owns the ball with, you know, with that, that offense that they're running. That mm -hmm. is basically his offense. That's, what's going to make it really intriguing is which one can go out there and it's going to be who That's has good. the best time of possession yeah. and the defenses both have shown up, especially South Carolina's geez, Louise. Yeah. That's going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, shout out to our guy, uh, Chris Marler and Corey Burton from Locked On Gamecocks and from Locked On Vanderbilt. Make sure you go check out those guys because they do a great job covering those teams. Uh, finally, let's get to our final keys to the game. Jay, just give me the biggest key to this matchup for you. It's going to stay pressure on the quarterback. Our defensive line has to get a lot of pressure. If we can keep getting pressure or getting some good blitzes in there, get Desan McCullough out there. Blitzing on the edge with that defensive line, we're going to have them in shambles. And that's going to be the most important thing. If you can get those guys in there rushing on the edge or pushing straight up the middle, I think we can have a potential opportunity for an Alabama-like blowout. But we've got to do that. A lot of it. What about you? Woo! -hoo. 
Alabama like blowout, loving the heat, loving the uh, the expectations there. Uh, to me, it's just Jackson Arnold. Just play within the system. Just play within yourself. Don't feel like you got to do too much. Again, your defense is going to help you out. Your offensive line is going to help you out. Your your wide receivers, the dudes that you called studs, are going to help you out. You don't got to do it all. You don't got to try to do too much. Just play within the system, and you'll be fine. It's it's a road environment, but it's not like you're going into Death Valley. So this yep. is going to be a, an environment that will be challenging, but not un unbeatable it's not an unbeatable environment so just play within the system take care of the football you'll be all right so jay what's your prediction for oklahoma at ole miss for week 11 at missouri you said ole miss it's pretty Sorry. good though it's what okay I, after the best of us. oh my gosh it's early um give me so oklahoma dumb. 28 missouri 10 wow okay all right um so much of this depends on whether it's Brady Cook or Drew Pine. I think we probably expect it's going to be Drew Pine and not Brady Cook, even though Eli Milhouse Drinkwitz is keeping his cards close to the chest. I'm going to say it's Oklahoma 27. I'm going to give Missouri a little bit of respect and say 14. I think without Nate Noel, things get very, very uh, tricky for them. Yeah. So, that to me is probably that's the only reason why I give us a chance of being able to do that. Not having Noel, it's it's gonna hurt them. I yeah. think that's gonna really hurt them more than anything. And Marcus Carroll is is a solid back. He's not bad, but Noel seems to be the one that took over to be their main bell cow. And yeah, that's that's the that's the one. I mean, we're gonna have to stop Marcus. You know, I mean, he's Georgia State. He was pretty solid, thirteen hundred rushing yards. But this year it was Nate. And as long as we bottle up Carroll, I think we'll be fine in that game. But yeah, I'm I think losing Nate Noel is gonna hurt them a lot more than they anticipated. But at the same time, not having a quarterback that can really throw the ball very well. I mean, Drew Pine threw three interceptions this season, all of them against Alabama. Yeah, it's not a great recipe for success when your run game is missing its leading rusher and you're going up against one of the best run defenses in the country in Oklahoma. Yep. So not a great recipe for the Missouri Tigers. If they're having to play Drew Pine, he'll have to kind of play out of his mind, which listen, Oklahoma's given up some plays through the air over the last few weeks. Um, I don't think they'll play an, a 100% clean game, but I think they'll play a better game and yep. they'll pick up the win, get bowl eligible and have a chance to finish the season on a high note. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Sooners. Thanks so much for tuning in, being a part of the show. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. We're free and available on all podcast platforms. Again, we are here for you every single day as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Follow Jay on Twitter at Unfair Sports. Check out his show at Unfair Sports on YouTube as well. Follow me at John Nine Williams. You can read my work covering the Sooners over at SoonersWire.com. And be with us Saturday night as we'll go live following the conclusion of Oklahoma at Missouri. Not Ole Miss. At Missouri. It's All been a long week, guys. Had a long, had a long day. But we cannot wait to break this game down with you here on Locked On Sooner. So, again, make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. But until next time, he's Jay Smith. I'm John Williams. Boomer. Sooner.